Greetings everyone, welcome to Nurse Joe RPG. In this retrospective video, we are going to tackle a very specific time and place in my gaming experience on why I have come to love this genre in the first place. But in order to do that, we need to go back to this time and place where it all began for me, the Philippines in the 1990s. Manila in the 90s. The capital and the rest of the Philippines were pretty much recovering from years of dictatorship rule as it makes little baby step progress towards the new millennium. In adjacent to the West, pop culture was pretty much the same as MTV's growing influence introduced us to grunge, punk, rock, and even pop groups. For us Filipino kids growing up in the 90s, it was either you are loyal to one thing or the other. Example. Nike versus Adidas, Coke versus Pepsi, Metal versus Hip Hop, NWO versus DX, Backstreet Boys versus NSYNC, and of course, a kid of culture must choose between Nintendo or Sega. As part of Asia, Nintendo indoctrinated us with the video game console called the Famicom, or the Family Computer. In the United States, they call it the Nintendo Entertainment System, or the NES. In the Philippines, the most well-off and comfortable households were the only ones who can afford a, a Nintendo Family Computer back then. Regardless, the Philippines never really felt the full damage of the video game crash of 1983 as video game arcades were pretty much dominant during the late 80s and the early 90s. When Nintendo's fear of influence reached the Philippines, a kid owning a Famicom was the shit of the neighborhood. Our broke asses would watch from the neighbor's window as they played Super Mario and even Mega Man. We would even befriend the shittiest kid in the neighborhood who owns the system just so we can play Galaga and Ice Climbers. Some of us would even visit our least favorite cousins who owns a Famicom just to play Battle City and Contra. Those kids who have pride and even saved up their lunch money would just go to the nearest house who owns a Famicom and then rent those systems out to us. Things got more interesting when the Sega Genesis or even Mega Drive became the alternative to the aging Famicom or NES. As games like Sonic, Alter Beast, Golden Axe, Streets of Rage, Mortal Kombat, NBA Jam, and other popular titles helped shape the minds of the Generation X. In the end, our family was able to get us a Famicom. But during that time, the Game Boy and Game Gear were already out. Two years later, my aunt and uncle was able to buy us a Sega Mega Drive and it came with a one free game as a promo. When I saw this particular game, I knew we had to have it. The game was Yu Yu Hakusho Makyo Taitsusen. We played this game before and after school. If there's one thing I love more than video games, then it's anime. The 90s also blessed the Philippines with shit ton of Japanese animation. As a Filipino kid back in the mid-90s, we had tons of quality shows to work with. RPN Channel 9 had Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, Rama 1 Half, and even Regino. IBC 13 had Yu Yu Hakusho, Vodas 5, Daimos, Battle Ball, Time Quest, and Super Boink. ABC 5 had Sailor Moon, Eta Rangers, Slam Dunk. GMA 7 had Gundam Wing, Trigun, Vision of Escaflone, Hell to Chernube, Flame of Breca, Lupin the Third, Night Hunters, Musketon, Pokemon, Bubblegum Crisis, and Fushigi Yugi. ABC BN Channel 2 had Magic Knight Rayer, Evangelion, Slayers, Zenki, Card Copper Sakura, Cyber Marinette J, Tenchi Muyo, and tons of shows that were produced by the Nippon Animation. I could go on and on. Needless to say, video games and anime did affect my uh, schoolwork. I'm sure others in the 90s did as well. I mean, how could I keep my grades up if every channel has anime shows prime time every day? Plus, I need to play some video games every now and then. But then it came a time when the video games became mundane and repetitive for me as my mind matured and became more refined. 
so playing video games were set to the back burner as I stepped into high school. As I was about to hang my controller, the video game industry drastically changed yet again. From Nintendo's dishonorable and blindsided attack on Sony, in order to smite Sega to the ground, appeared a vengeful gaming dark horse that would arguably overtake them definitively to up to this day. Join me next time as I share my story as my love for Japanese animation and video games got fused together once more as the PlayStation 1 hits the Philippines during the late 90s and early 2000s.